<laughs> All righty. Hope to see you again. Hi, I'm Steve, and I'm about to launch a weather balloon into space. Lots of people ask me why I wanted to do this. The answer is, well, because I can. These days, it's affordable for an ordinary person to launch a camera to space and find it pretty easily afterwards. To say that your household has a shoestring space program is a pretty cool thing. Let's think about it like this. Basically, to reach near space, you need to be able to get the payload at least 20 miles up. A weather balloon for meteorological use is pretty much the only affordable way to get the payload that high without a rocket. You just fill a weather balloon with helium and add a little technology to track it on its way up and down and take some nice pictures. The best camera for this is the GoPro. They're rugged and they cost less than 300 bucks. To see where it's headed, a spot GPS tracker gives a signal out to a website every five minutes, so I'll be able to see where it's headed on the way up and down. The design of the payload is very simple. I took a styrofoam picnic cooler from the garage, cut a small hole in it for the camera, filled it with pillow foam from a craft store, and covered it with colored tape so it would be easy to see. The most important thing to plan is the launch and landing zones. My brother and I decided to launch it from Bucknell University, where I went to school. Central Pennsylvania is a pretty remote area, which is perfect because no one wants this landing in a city. To predict the landing, we used a website which forecasts wind patterns for weather balloons, and Google Earth to get an idea of where it would land. After we realized that the balloon could snag on a building right after launch, we decided to move the launch site to a state park a few miles from campus. Alright, so we got this, bison colors, got GPS right here. This weighs as much as the balloon's going to pull up, so when it goes up in the air, when this becomes weightless, we know we have enough lift. On the morning of the launch, we performed our final checks, filled the balloon with helium, and before we knew it, it was time to send it on its merry way. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Holy cow, that's big. That's much faster than I thought it would be. Moments after we released, the balloon began to rise at over a thousand feet per minute. Soon after, we could see the entire valley despite it being a pretty cloudy day. All right. Good job. Gentlemen, I really appreciate you helping us. A little later, the video started to fade from the cloud cover, and eventually, the video fades for several minutes as we pass through the clouds. Eventually, we are above the cloud layer and floating peacefully as the atmosphere thins. After 40,000 feet, we lost contact with the GPS, but the balloon kept rising, eventually reaching the edge of our planet. Unfortunately, the camera batteries froze and died, but our GPS shows that the balloon shortly thereafter begins to fall. Even at 42,000 feet before the parachute was able to catch any air, it was hurtling towards Earth at 100 miles an hour. Thankfully, it slowed down and came to rest in a small town called Stillwater, Pennsylvania, about 35 miles from the launch site. We were prepared for a challenging discovery, but frankly, we were just happy to see that the payload was still transmitting. Unfortunately, it was sending us a signal. From 50 feet up in a tree. Here's we located the payload and decided that we weren't going home without a fight. So after chopping down a tree, and then the one next to it, it's going better than I thought actually. We finally got the payload back in one piece. 